Elementary music teacher friend, you love what you do, but you might feel unappreciated and, in fact, unseen some days. You may even feel like you're on a music teacher island and just want to connect with other music teachers who can relate to both your struggles and wins when it comes to teaching elementary music. I get you and understand completely the feelings you're having. That's why each and every week, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast will provide you with solo and guest episodes that will help you realize you're not alone in your music teaching journey. Throughout each episode, my goal is for you to be able to walk away with actionable steps and ideas to help you feel like you're ready to take on the new week with whatever challenges may be thrown your way. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Peresta, and I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're at home, in your car, in the shower, or wherever else you're listening, grab your cup of coffee or whatever other beverage is nearby and listen in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Hello, friends. As you're listening to this, tomorrow is Thanksgiving for those of you that are in the United States or celebrate Thanksgiving wherever you are in the world. And I wanted to do an episode that's a little bit different where I come on and I share reasons that I am thankful for music teachers, especially in 2020. I had originally planned to publish a guest episode today, but I pushed it to next week because I really, really felt in my heart. I wanted to share this with you guys because I know 2020 is crazy. Like insert any other word there. It is uh, one for the record book, you know, to be honest. And it is so hard to keep going, especially as a teacher, especially as a music teacher, that you feel like there's no end in sight. You feel like you've been dealing with this since, let's be honest, February or March. And that you're just wanting normalcy back. You want your classroom back. You want to teach your students in your classroom again. You want to put on performances. You want to be able to sing and play instruments and do all the things that you normally would do with your students in a music classroom. It feels like you leave school probably most days frustrated, um, overwhelmed, Maybe you're not even leaving school per se. Maybe you're just shutting a laptop down after you end your school day in your own home. But whatever it looks like for you, I know the overwhelm you are feeling. I know that you are feeling just exhausted. I know that you're feeling unappreciated. So I really felt in my heart, especially for Thanksgiving, as I'm sitting here thinking about what I'm thankful for. One of the main things I'm thankful for is music educators. And I don't think you hear accolades enough. And I don't think you hear thank you enough from others, right? You don't hear those words a lot. Maybe occasionally. And of course, you're not in it to get accolades and to get the thank yous. But although that's nice and it helps you keep going. Just like when you give a word of encouragement to a student, it helps them want to do better for you. It's the same way as teachers. If you don't ever feel like you're appreciated doing what you're doing, then you start feeling a little bit like, why am I in this in the first place? Why am I doing this? Why am I showing up if no one cares what I'm doing with these kids, right? So with that said, Maybe you've had feelings like that. Maybe you're just one of those super positive people and you're just like trucking along and you're like, listen, I haven't had one negative thought ever. If so, please email me and let's get you on this podcast because others need to hear from you. But if you've experienced even just one negative thought, feeling, emotion, even as recently as today, then I want you to listen to this episode because I want to encourage you today. I really want you to go in to Thanksgiving and go back into school next week or whenever you return with just feeling like, okay, someone out there does appreciate me. And it's not just me saying I appreciate you. I promise you, you guys, you're appreciated way more than you probably even realize. All right. So with that said, I want you to know that there are negative parts of this year and all the things thrown in your face like feels like literally every second of every day it's hard to see the positive 
right? It's hard to see the positive when you're just constantly just going like a snowball. I feel like I use that analogy a lot, but it's true. Like the snowball just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So you don't really have time to just stop and go, hmm, let me sit and reflect today on what I'm grateful for. And it's easy, like I said, to see the negative. But when you stop and think about what you're thankful for, focusing on the good will help you to remember that there's a lot more to be thankful for than you realize All right. So maybe you're having a hard time coming up with things to be thankful for this year. Maybe you're struggling with feeling grateful. Maybe you're just struggling with Thanksgiving for that matter, because it just looks different in 2020. Let's be honest. The big family gatherings are just not going to be what they usually are. I want you to remember that your students are thankful for you. All right. You may not even notice that. You may be like, yeah, right. They're not even coming to my calls anymore. They're barely showing up. And when I go to their classroom, they're just kind of like not in it. All right. Please know that they're more thankful for you than you think they are. Okay. You, in return, be thankful for your students. You're all in this together and realize that they do appreciate and value you. The kids are dealing with so much right now too. They are just getting by day by day sometimes too. They are struggling with having to do virtual learning all the time. They miss coming to your music classroom. And if they are coming to your music classroom, they miss the way it usually was too, except for kindergartners because they just don't know. To them, this is just normal probably, which is sad, but I have a kindergartner, a kindergarten son. But I know that your students are thankful for you. They are so grateful to be able to learn music, to have a teacher that teaches them music, that loves them and loves music. And so just know that when you feel like you're not appreciated by the adults, know that these kids are so thankful and so grateful to have you as their music teacher. I can't tell you with my own children how many times they've come home singing a song that they weren't maybe allowed to even sing at school, but they learned it, they listened to it, they experienced the song. They can't stop singing. They can't stop doing body percussion. They come home talking to me about different things they learned in music class, like melody and form and all kinds of different stuff. Kids are listening more than you think they are, and they are thankful for you. Maybe they're not showing it when they're in front of your face, but I guarantee you they're going home and to their parents or shutting down that laptop and telling their parents what they did in music class. And the cool thing about music, as you very much are well aware of, is it is a sticky point. It sticks in kids' brains and what they're learning. They'll be singing songs like for the next week. They will not forget. And so they are so thankful. And even if they're not, they don't even maybe realize they're thankful for you. But by experiencing music and by living music and by sharing music, even with their families, they're thankful that you are the one having them do that. You're the reason they're able to do that, okay? So that is the first thing I want to say is be thankful for your students and know that they're thankful for you. I am thankful for you because you're dedicated and you don't give up. You have spent many nights in tears probably wondering how you're going to teach in the new normal, wondering how you're going to adjust lesson plans to meet your students where they're at, how you're going to use a new technology that was thrown on you after you just figured out this other technology your district told you to use, how you're going to assess your students, how you're going to teach students who are not able to make it live to your calls, or if they're even watching the lessons you're sending home that are pre-recorded, you're probably just so overwhelmed but you're dedicated and you're not giving up. How do I know this? I work with hundreds and hundreds of music teachers every single week in my membership site, in my Harmony membership site. I am constantly talking to music teachers online when I'm doing a podcast interview, when I'm doing a Facebook Live and I see the people in the comments telling me what's going on. I get emails all the time, you guys. I know you're dedicated. How do I know that? Because you're asking questions, because you're not giving up, because you're not just staying stuck going, well, that didn't work. I'm done. You don't just keep doing the same things knowing they're not working, but you keep shifting and you keep trying new things and you're dedicated. I have never seen teachers more dedicated than music teachers. You are dedicated to your craft. You're dedicated to your instrument. You're dedicated to music. You're dedicated to your students. You're dedicated to showing up. You're not giving up. And I am so thankful for that. I know you miss your students and I know you miss your normal. I know you miss air quote normal teaching music, right? But you keep showing up 
even if you have one student coming to your Google Classroom, even if you have one student showing up to your Zoom call, you keep showing up no matter what. That's dedication. And you don't see that very often in this world anymore with a lot of professions, right? You're not giving up. And I am so thankful and proud of you for that and proud to be associated with the world of music education. So I want to say thank you. Thank you for being so dedicated. Thank you for not giving up when things get hard. I know you have to put on a brave face. I know that you are smiling on the outside, but in the inside, you're like, I hate this and I'm so done. But you're dedicated and you're not giving up and don't give up because you are needed. Your students, like I said in number one, they're thankful for you and they're grateful for you and they appreciate you, okay? You work so hard a lot of times and you feel like it goes unnoticed. I mean, maybe you're over there nodding your head right now listening to this. Maybe you're raising your hand. Maybe you've had that experience in, you know, even this week, yesterday maybe. You feel like you put it on way more work than even other teachers or your administrator see. And you feel like it's just going unnoticed that they're just like not appreciating it. And so you are also putting in so many early mornings, late nights, and weekends. You feel like a lot of times maybe you're not respected as the professional you are. And you're not even viewed sometimes as an air quote teacher. And I've talked about that before, you guys. But please know that you are so noticed. You are so appreciated. Those early mornings, those late nights, those weekends, you are pouring into planning to make it relevant to your students to readjust lesson plans based on making sure that your particular group of students, because we've talked about this before, your students that you're teaching are not going to be like anyone else's students. The demographic at your school is not going to be like anyone else's. So your students and what they need from you is not going to look like another music teacher. But you know what? You're planning for that. You are knowing what you're wanting to do and you are researching it, planning it, asking questions, going on social media to look in the different Facebook groups at what other teachers are doing. You're looking at Google, you're reading blogs, you're listening to podcasts to get free professional development to help you be the best music teacher you can be. I am thankful for you for that. Because I know all the work, it's not just in your contract hours, right? You, You are doing so much work outside of normal school time, normal planning time. If you even get a plan time, that's another subject for another day. But you're doing so much extra work outside of your regular contract hours that doesn't go noticed, you feel like, by so many. Don't do it for them. You do it for your kiddos. You do it for those students. You do it because you know it matters. And I'm thankful for you for that. I notice you. You are seen. You are noticed. And you are appreciated. You're beyond creative. Oh my goodness, you already knew you're a creative being, right? That's why you're a music teacher. You are stretched and pulled more in 2020 than you ever thought you would ever be for a lot of reasons. But in the music education world, your creativity is being used, I feel like, more this year than it's ever needed to be used. You're always creative with your students. You're always creative as a musician. You're always creative as a teacher, But in 2020, and I'm not just talking about the technology and the being creative with decorating your cart and being creative with new ways of decorating your classroom and things like that, but you're being creativity, you're being more creative in the way you're planning. You're being more creative in the way you're implementing lessons. You're being creative and when you find out your kids can't sing, you're adapting it and having them speak instead of singing, listen instead of singing, experience music by patting their legs while they're listening to music instead of singing. You're having to be more creative when it comes to movement and say, okay, I have to adjust this folk dance. We can't hold hands and do si do but what can we do instead? We can move from our desks. We can move from our spots. Maybe you have the kiddos standing in a hula hoop to have them space out. They're moving in their own space. You're being creative by adjusting and adapting quickly and by the fly, on the fly is what I mean. And you're being creative. I don't know how else to put it, but you're being so creative. And I am so thankful for you for that. Because of you, these kids are getting to learn music and you are such a creative being. And be proud of yourself for how creative you're being. 
you probably never knew you would have to be this creative, right? But goodness gracious, you guys are doing so awesome. I am blown away. And I know you probably are too, but every time I get on social media or I listen to whatever, a professional development opportunity or whatever it might be, I am blown away at the creativity I hear coming out of music teachers' mouths. Like, oh my gosh, I never thought about that. That's a great idea. Oh my gosh, I never thought about, you know, doing that with a particular story. I never thought about adjusting movement that way. Oh, that's a great idea to do recorder that way instead of that way. There's so many different creative ideas coming out and you've probably seen a lot of them too. And so be thankful for that. Be thankful for the community of music educators sharing ideas freely and openly and without hesitation. And that's another thing is I'm thankful that you're so willing to share and to be real and honest and vulnerable and sharing what you do with your music students. Be thankful for music ed- educators and be thankful that you have a creative mind that you can use and that you can adapt and adjust to fit the needs of your students during this crazy school year. If you're willing to learn new things and stretch yourself, which ties right back into the being creative part. How many new things have you had to learn to do this year? How many ways have you been stretched and pulled and feel like you maybe did not know how to do certain things, but because this school year has forced you to, you have been stretched to learn new things, new things when it comes to technology, new ways of adapting instruction, new ways of learning to teach virtually, new ways of knowing how to meet your students where they're at in their classrooms on a cart or whatever else it might look like. You've been stretched and learning so many new things and be thankful for that. Be thankful that you've had this opportunity because I fully believe that a lot of the things you're learning this school year and a lot of the things that you are being asked to do and that you are needing to do in order to move forward, you're going to be able to bring a lot of these new skills with you into the next school year and and into the next one and the next one and the next one. All these new skills are not going to go to waste. You're learning so many new things and you're stretching yourself But when you're doing that, I feel like by stretching ourselves, no matter what you're learning in life, it helps you grow as a person and as an educator. So all these things you're learning, they're not going to go to waste. It's hard right now, but usually after the hard, the hard stretches you. And after the hard, all these things you're learning are going to, you're going to be able to bring with you and you're going to be like, oh, Google Classroom, no, literally I can set that up in like my sleep by now, right? And you are going to be able to do all these new things with your students because this year has opened the doors for you to be able to learn some new things that you maybe never had the opportunity to learn before. All right. You're willing to help others even when it's not reciprocated. What I mean is your colleagues, your coworkers, you're constantly helping other teachers online. Maybe you're always seeing these questions being asked and you're always the one willing to step up and help. I'm so thankful for that. What is it with about music teachers? I don't know, but I have seen that so many times where music teachers are always willing to help other teachers who are struggling or you're asked to help with technology because people just assume you're good at it because you're the music teacher. You're willing to step up and help. And by doing that, you are just an amazing person, first of all, but by helping others, it's getting noticed more than you think it is. You're getting, you're putting your name out there in your school building and other teachers know you're the one willing to help. And I promise you, it's going to come back around. There's going to be something you need maybe in a few months and maybe it's next school year. I don't know what it, what it might be, but some of these other teachers will be able to come back around and help you. But it feels like music teachers a lot of times are the ones who step up first and are the ones willing to help. And that is so amazing. And so even when it's not reciprocated, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that you are the ones, music teachers, stepping up and helping others in your school building, even when you don't feel like it's returned to you. So keep doing that because it's about character. Make sure your character is where it should be. Make sure you are having, like I said, good character. You are always willing to help even if others aren't without overwhelming yourself, of course, because you have to put yourself first and your students come first. And so if others are constantly asking you for help, it doesn't always have to be right at their beck and call. You can say, yes, I'd be willing to help you with that, but it can't be today. It can be at this time that's convenient for me. And you love your students with your whole heart. 
You would do anything for them, not just teach music, but you are there for them, to comfort them, to guide them, to lead them, to mentor them. And you know that way more goes on in a music room than just teaching music. You are very much aware of that. And these kids, no matter if you teach 100 to 800 students, they know you love them. And they know you love them more than just a music teacher. They're aware that you are advocating for them, that you are planning for them, that you are thinking of new ways of teaching them. These kids appreciate you. So keep showing up. And I know you love your students passionately. And that's what should keep driving you and pushing you forward as this crazy school year continues is your students. And so remember them when you have those days that are stressful and that you feel like the days that nothing's going right, that your students are what matters. It's student focused and keep remembering how much you love these kids and that you're in it for the kids. And I'm thankful that you love your students so much that you're willing to keep showing up even in this hard year of 2020. You make a difference in the lives of your students, even if you don't see it. You're planting seeds in their lives. It's going to last a lifetime. You never know what seed you're planting in the lives of one of your students that's going to flourish one day where they're going to become a musician or they're going to go into music and they're going to go into middle school, band, choir, orchestra, into high school, into college. And even if they don't pursue music, even if they don't go into music in middle school, even if they don't go into it. Um, as a career, you are helping them explore the world of music, appreciate music, and have a lifetime love and passion of music because of you and the way you present it to them, the way you show music to them, the way that you talk to them about music, the way you teach them music. So keep planting those seeds. Those kids need you and they love you even on the days you don't feel like they do. Even on the days you're feeling uninspired, They know that you love them and you're planting seeds. You never know even if just one sentence that you've said that day sticks in the minds of your students and it will stick with them a lifetime. Still to this day, I want you to think back to one of your elementary teachers. Maybe it's your elementary music teacher and maybe there's a sentence or a statement or a paragraph or a something they said that stuck with you. I still can remember specific teachers to this day where something they said or something they taught or the way they looked at me, the way they made me feel has stuck with me to this day. So you are making a difference in the lives of your students and I'm thankful for that. You're inspiring kids to follow their dreams and by showing them you're passionate about what you do about music and showing up every week to teach them, you're inspiring them to follow their dreams. Maybe they don't even realize that right now, but you're showing up doing what you love and you're smiling and you're singing with them and maybe you're not singing with them because of COVID, but you're doing music with them and you're passionate about what you do you're going to inspire them to follow what they're passionate about. Maybe you never thought about it that way, but kids are all passionate about something. And maybe they don't know what they want to do with their life yet or with their career yet or when they get older, but they're starting to kind of figure it out as they get older. They're going to start figuring out what path in life to take. And by showing up and being passionate about teaching them music, you're inspiring these kids to follow their dreams. So keep that in mind when you have those hard days where you're like, I'm just not feeling it. I don't feel like showing up today. Everything's breaking in technology. I just really was just, I'm just not in the mood to do this today. Your kids need to see you being inspiring and seeing you show up with a smile on your face and ready to teach them music because you're going to inspire them to follow their dreams. And I'm so thankful for that because you do such an amazing job of that music teacher. You do such an amazing job of showing up with a smile, even on those days that you are feeling like everything is going wrong. You're still showing up with a smile and you never know what kiddo is coming through that music door or showing up to that live Zoom call and they are so excited about music that day because something else happened in their life. Something else happened in their classroom that day. And they're so excited to come to your classroom because they always know that you're the teacher with a smile on your face. You're the teacher that's always excited to teach music. Because of you, they're getting to experience and learn music and they can just feel how much you love them. Because of you, 
even one kid is getting to learn music. This is something huge and something you shouldn't take for granted. There's so many schools cutting music or cutting music to part time. And there's so many schools that the kids just don't get to experience music for one reason or another. But because of you, your students are getting to experience music. This year, I know it looks different. It may be virtual. It may be on a cart. You may be in a hybrid teaching situation. You may be just sending home recordings of music or paper packets or whatever. There, there's so many different teaching situations. But the point of it all is for your students to learn music. And because of you, they're getting to learn music. It may not be the way you want to. It may not be like it normally is in a typical school year. But because of you, your students are getting to learn music. Keep that in mind when you feel like giving up. Remember the schools that don't have music. Keep that in mind on the hard days where you feel like nobody is coming to your calls, okay, if you're virtually teaching. There's some teachers who have, I have talked to many of them who have lost their music teaching position. So be grateful that you still have a music teaching position that because of you students are still getting to learn music. It is so important to remember that. Your why is you showing up to teach music to your students, to inspire them, to love on them, to teach music and to really connect with your kiddos because they're going through stuff too. When you think your life is hard, these kids are adapting to a new way of instruction and a new way of learning that they never in a million years, families and teachers alike never thought kiddos would have to go through. So keep showing up. I am thankful, beyond words, thankful for you, grateful for you, proud of you, in all of you, music teacher friend. Please know how thankful I am for you. I am grateful for you showing up for your students. Those parents of the kiddos you're teaching are grateful for you. The other teachers in your school building, although they may not say thank you and you feel like they just view you as a planning teacher, they're thankful for you. Your administrator is thankful for you. The community that you teach in is thankful for you. The world of music thanks you for planting the seeds of music education in the lives of these kids. Well, hey there. Thank you so much for listening into the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. There is an exclusive Facebook group just for listeners of this podcast and any elementary music teacher called the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook Group. Come on over and join us there where we have conversations around the podcast episodes and encourage each other each and every week. And also head to my website, thedomesticmusician.com. I have some free resources there that you can download to help you gain traction in your classroom today as well as the blog and the membership site and all kinds of other goodies to help you keep going in your music teaching journey. I cannot wait to keep connecting with you and encouraging you and spurring you on in your journey of teaching elementary music. Hang in there, have an amazing week, and I will see you soon.